Hello, welcome to our webinar today, Introduction to Mindfulness, Using Mindfulness to Navigate Turbulent Times. My name is Summer Meyer. I work at Peace Health as a certified health coach and digital product manager. I'm really happy to be your moderator today. And if you haven't joined one of our webinars before, um, before I introduce you to our speaker, I would just like to call out, you can feel free to ask questions and we'll have a period at the end where we open up questions for our speaker today. Um, so be sure if you have any questions to log those and just know that towards the end, we will uh, address questions. Uh, it is my pleasure today to introduce to you our speaker. His name is Al Parikh. He's a mindfulness coach, and he's also a project manager at Peace Health. Al is a longtime practitioner and a coach of mindfulness, and he began his mindfulness practice at a retreat outside of Mumbai in 1991. He's been coaching since 2013, and especially he's been doing this in the workplace, specifically with Peace Health. He offers a weekly session on Thursdays for our caregivers to practice mindfulness. And it's just been very lovely. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Al, and I will stop sharing my screen and I'll kick it over to you, Al. Welcome. Oh, thank you for that introduction, Summer. You're welcome. I uh... I'm waiting to get a hold of the presentation. Okay, here we go. I think you ah, okay, should show have myself. it. Okay, bear with me. I'm. Are you able to see my screen? Mm-hmm. Summer. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me, I'm sorry, let me just queue up the slides. I thought that I'll be viewing your slide. Um, so just bear with me, please. Okay, and I'm happy to change back over if you'd like. Uh, yeah, let's do that for the first couple of slides and then um, I'll take over, okay? Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'll go ahead and advance this to the next one here for you to give okay. us an All overview. Right. Well, yes, well, uh, thank you again for that introduction, Summer. I would like to welcome all the participants to this webinar. We are going through some very rough and turbulent times. I think that we all need as much help as we can get to navigate through this difficult situation. So by the end of this webinar, I hope that you will have gained some knowledge and get access to some tools that will help you manage your situation a little better. So to provide an overview of this webinar's content, I will begin by talking about mindfulness. What exactly is mindfulness? And then I'll talk about the health benefits of mindfulness. I'll talk about the types of mindfulness practices and then give some tips on practicing. So all this will take anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. And then we will have a 15 minute guided mindfulness of breath practice. So it's going to be a live guided practice and I'll guide all of you to it. And after that practice, Summer will open up the virtual floor for a question and question and answer session. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is a very broad and deep practice. 
in this webinar i hope to give you a brief but overall sense of the practice and what it entails i also want to clarify that the terms mindfulness practice and mindfulness meditation are used synonymously some people prefer to use the the term practice whereas others may prefer to use the term meditation but uh, i tend to use both synonymously so what is mindfulness there are two very popular definitions of this practice and i i will talk about each of these definitions all right so the first definition on your screen is that mindfulness is the gentle effort to be continuously present with experience so i want to highlight three attributes of this definition here the first attribute is gentle in this practice we are being very gentle we are not hard on ourselves as we are most of the time mindfulness practice is essentially a very gentle practice the second attribute is one of continuous presence so mindfulness is a practice where we are trying to stay with the present moment as much as we can we are not imagining things we are not trying to predict the future but we are trying to stay in the present moment continuously as much as we can the third attribute is one of experience so experience can be broken down into whatever it is that is happening inside of us none of us have the same experience and even for us we won't have the same experience hour to hour or minute to minute our experience changes all the time so to rephrase this popular definition of mindfulness we can say that mindfulness is the practice where we are very gently trying to stay in the present moment with whatever it is that is arising inside of us the second definition of mindfulness is mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non judgmentally so the first attribute in this definition is on particular way within this practice we are directing our attention to a specific and consistent object we are, are not letting our attention go off on all directions we are trying to direct our attention to a specific and chosen object the second attribute is on purpose the emphasis on being purposeful is important because it is a counterbalance to the automatic pilot default that inhabits our minds most of the time so there is an element of intention here so for example when we do this practice later on we 
will purposely and intentionally and gently bring our attention to our breath because our breath is going to be our chosen object of this practice. The third attribute is one on non-judgment. So with this practice, we don't judge an experience as good or bad, pleasant or unpleasant, welcoming or unwelcoming. We simply accept whatever arises inside of us. We notice it arising and we notice it passing through us. So this definition can be paraphrased as saying that mindfulness practice is one where we direct our attention to a specific object in the present moment very intentionally and without making any judgments on whatever it is that arises inside of us. Can we go to the next slide, please, Summer? There you go. So here are the benefits. Of, thank you, Summer. Here are the benefits of mindfulness practice. The first one is uh, stress reduction. And again, uh, just want to point out that uh, these benefits have been proven through a number of studies and research, uh, mainstream research, into the effects that it has on people. So let me talk about this first benefit, the benefit of stress reduction. So the idea is that with this practice, we are able to become more aware of our thoughts as well as their innate nature. So this allows us to deal with our thoughts in a very skillful way. We can step away from them and observe them so that our stress response is either not initiated at all or if it's initiated, it's not as intense as otherwise. Another aspect of stress reduction is that we have two modes uh, of uh, behavior. One is our default doing mode. Doing mode is one where we take actions to achieve a specific goal. This is the mode where we find ourselves in most of the time. This is where we adopt a problem solving approach and we move on from one challenge to another, one challenge to another without stopping. There is another mode and that is the being mode. Being mode is one where our focus is on self-awareness rather than on pursuing any goal. So with this practice, we enable or we turn on the being mode which promotes relaxation and calmness. The second benefit is one of reduced rumination. Our default habit pattern of the mind is such that we react unskillfully to stress or any other unpleasant emotions. So for example, let us say that we are stressed because of some situation at work. When we become aware of the fact that we are stressed, we become even more anxious and we become more stressed. So what happens is there is a primary layer of suffering that is a direct effect of something that is affecting us. And then our unskillful response to the suffering 
creates a secondary layer of suffering. One manifestation of this secondary layer of suffering is rumination, where we are resentful of the fact that we are stressed, where we exhibit anger towards others for causing us to be stressed, and, and, and so on. Now, the problem is that the secondary layer of suffering can be far longer lasting, it far more intense than the primary layer of suffering. So mindfulness gives us the tool to cut through the secondary layer of suffering, thereby allowing us to deal directly with the primary layer of suffering. And the best part is that when we are able to face the primary layer of suffering, when we observe the suffering, the stress within us through mindfulness, the very act of facing the suffering actually reduces it. So the primary layer of suffering can get reduced or it can even go away completely. And then when the primary layer goes away, the secondary layer, uh, th there is no need for the secondary layer. And so we find ourselves in, in a very uh, healthy and uh, wellness state of mind. Now, the example that I gave you was about stress, right? It's about um, our mental being. But I want to take a brief segue and talk about the primary layer of suffering that is caused by physical pain. So it has been found that for people who have chronic pain condition, mindfulness practice allows them to deal with their pain more effectively. So using this approach of primary suffering and secondary suffering, a whole new methodology of pain management has evolved uh, in the last 10, 15 years. It's called mindfulness-based pain management. And it is predicated on this principle that when you cut through the secondary layer of suffering and deal with the primary layer of suffering, which is physical pain, we are better able to deal with the symptoms of pain. So this methodology is called mindfulness-based pain management. So again, so that was a segue, you know, coming back to this uh, slide, when I talk about reduced rumination, it's rumination due to mental suffering and also physical suffering less emotional reactivity. When we are able to skillfully deal with the primary layer of suffering, we find that the stressors that create suffering, we find them to be less aversive because we now know that they don't have as much control or as much hold over us as before. So this sense of confidence gives way to less emotional reactivity. Um, and then the, the fourth benefit is improved focus and cognitive ability. Again, when we are able to deal with the stressors in our daily lives in such a skillful manner, we automatically find ourselves with improved focus and improved cognitive ability because a whole bunch of distractions that affected us before are now no longer affecting us. So we find ourselves with more focus and with more cognitive ability. Thanks, Al. This is very, very, very good stuff.
Thank you, Samar. So, can we get the next slide, please, Samar? All right. Now, there are many types of mindfulness practices. Um, the first one is using our breath. And we will experience, we will do the mindfulness of breath practice. Similar to breath, there are other objects, like for example, our body. Our body can be an amazing object for mindfulness practice. Our thoughts can be used as objects, um, as well as our emotions and mind states. All right, let's talk about mindfulness of breath practice. And again, I, I hope you all understand that this is a very, very condensed version of a practice that is very, very broad and deep in nature. But I think that it is a good start for some of you who are experiencing mindfulness for the first time. So mindfulness of breath practice has some important elements. So our breath is an amazing, portable, and ever-present tool to use. Take our breath with, with us wherever, wherever we go. We breathe all the time. So we can bring our attention back to our breath any time we choose or any time we remember. Also, our breath is a very neutral object. When we observe our breath, you know, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, that observation itself does not create any emotional reaction because the breath is simply breath. Another aspect of mindfulness of breath practice is that breath is an anchor to the present moment. When we breathe in, that is what is happening in the present moment. When we breathe out, that is what is happening in the present moment. So our breath is a wonderful anchor to the present moment. Of course, when we observe the breath, our minds will wander off, right? But the breath stays in the present. Can we get the third one, sir? Thank you. Um, mindfulness of breath practice leads to stability of mind. When we are focusing our attention on the breath, we will find that our minds will wander off. Every time we bring our attention back to our breath in a gentle manner, we are effectively improving our power of concentration. With, with increased skill on this practice, we are able to find some stability of mind as a direct result of the slowing down of thoughts. We don't feel that our minds are raging with thoughts over which we have no control. To the extent that we are able to slow down the flow of thoughts in our mind, to that extent, we can find peace of mind. Can we get the fourth one, please? Thank you. The ability to remain focused on the breath acts like an antidote to mental distraction. And the idea behind this principle is that when we are distracted by something, right, we have those thoughts in our minds and those thoughts feed on themselves. 
so those thoughts lead to emotions and then those emotions lead to another set of thoughts and very quickly we find ourselves in a state of mind where we have no control so the ability to remain focused on the breath acts like an antidote it reduces the spread of proliferating thoughts and unnecessary mental activity can we get the next slide please all right i will give you some quick tips on mindfulness of breath practice so the first tip be kind and gentle with yourself mindfulness is synonymous with kindfulness with this practice you are being kind to yourself we adopt a non striving attitude and the the, uh, the idea is that if we are striving towards achieving a specific goal we are working against ourselves because that strive uh, mode will generate a whole bunch of mental activity that we are trying to stop in the first place so it's important to adopt a non striving attitude we accept whatever arises within us as we practice mindfulness of breath so again this is the non judgment aspect of the practice that i was talking about earlier when we find that our attention has wandered off we gently let go of the distraction and bring it back to the breath and again every time we do this we are improving our concentration and we are strengthening our innate ability to stay mindful continuously for as long as we can we adopt a beginner's mind at realizing something about ourselves when we do this practice and finally have patience and trust that this process works this practice has been around for a long time as part of an old tradition okay can we okay, the next slide please summer great thank you so we will now do the guided mindfulness of breath practice it will last for 15 minutes but before we start the practice i want to uh, give some quick pointers so this practice will go on for approximately 15 minutes i will give brief instructions on preparing ourselves there will be four blocks of silence of around 3 minutes each so during these blocks of silence we will simply follow the breath as it comes in and goes out and when we find that our minds have wandered off we will bring it back to the breath interspersed with within these blocks of silence there'll be some gentle instructions so that if we find ourselves going off the deep end so to speak these instructions will bring us will remind us of this practice and then i will end with some traditional phrases of loving kindness so loving kindness is this very innate sense within us to wish for others what we wish for ourselves so loving kindness is an integral part of mindfulness practice so this practice is a practice of the mind as well as of our heart so summer will kick us off with a bell chime and um, and then after she she rings the bell we will close our eyes and you will listen to my instructions So Samad can you kick us off please
Sure. Welcome to the Mindfulness of Breath Meditation. Take a moment to let your body settle in a comfortable position. Relax the whole body. Keep the head, neck and back erect, but not rigid. Keep the hands comfortably placed on the lap or on the knees if sitting. Keep the hands on the sides if lying down. Intentionally, cultivate an attitude of patience, gentleness and kindness towards yourself. Allow your eyes to gently close and tune in to the feeling of the breath flowing in and out of the body. Focus your attention on the sensation of the breath moving past the nostrils or on the sensation of the breath moving into the belly lifting it during each in-breath and receding gently on each out-breath. Follow the breath as it comes in and goes out. Each time you notice your mind has wandered off, Gently bring it back to the breath. Choose as best as you can not to judge or to get carried away by the stories of your thoughts, fantasies and emotions. Gently let go and return back to the breath.
And this is Summer coming in. Al is having some technical difficulties with audio. So I'm going to move you through the practice of the second round. Go ahead and continue following your breath as it comes in and goes out. Each time you notice your mind has wandered off, gently bring it back to the breath. Choose as best as you can not to judge or get carried away by the stories of your thoughts, fantasies, and emotions. Gently let go and return back to the breath. We'll breathe in silence again for three minutes. We now come to an end of this meditation. Please stay centered for a few moments to dedicate the merits of this practice. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I live with ease. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings live with ease. Summer, can you finish us, finish us off with a bell chime? Wonderful. Thank you so, so much. So this brings us, of course, thank you for all your help. So, Summer, can you open us up for a Q&A session? Yes. Let me advance.
this slide. Um, we would like to ask participants at this point in time. I know it might be a little uh, different to come back into the present moment with us. You might be feeling a little bit different um, after that guided meditation from Al. Um, I would like to ask if you have any questions um, or if you would like to share how you describe your own experience with the practice, feel free to post anything into our chat window using the GoToWebinar tool. And I'm not seeing any questions yet. So I'll just uh, give it a couple of minutes and Al, if you would like to say any final words. Yeah, I, I hope you found this practice to be centering. I hope you were able to follow your breath for some period of time. And I hope you were able to bring it back, bring your attention back when you got distracted. So that is the nature of this practice. It's a very simple practice. But I would love to hear from you, your experience or any questions that you might have. Looks like everyone is super zen out and <laughs> uh, not interested maybe in typing any questions. So that is quite all right. Um, I, there have been actually some are coming in now. Um, many thank yous um, to Al and um, reiterations of how great this is in this very hard time. Thanks, Holly, for mentioning and acknowledging that. Um, Aaron, Natalie, and Sabert all are um, giving us their thanks. And, um, oh, uh, Alexark, uh, thank you for commenting this. She, uh, or, uh, the comment is, I found following um, my breath through my nose and settling my body into a sphere of a whole experience really helped. Thank you for that lovely comment. Um, yep, that was very nice, also, thank you. Yeah, Jill um, is also saying that this experience was relaxing and refreshing. Um, Courtney said it's super. And um, uh, Pam acknowledged that she actually ha had a hard time staying on task, distracted with breathing correctly and wondering how much time had passed. I will agree with you, Pam. I was um, in the same boat actually as you. So thank you for acknowledging um, of that challenge and that difficulty. I'm sure uh, you are definitely not alone in that way. Um, and then right. let's Summer, do one. Yeah, let me quick. I I'm sorry, Summer. Can I quickly interject here? Yes, please. Yeah, so in this practice, we are not trying to modify our breath in any way. We just go with the flow. We just go with the state of our breath as it is. It could be short breath or it could be a long breath. We don't try to change anything. We just go with the flow. Thank you. Nice, thank you for that, Al. Um, and Brian is actually asking, how do we continue this practice? Okay, all right. So can you uh, give us uh, the next slide, please, Summer? Sure. So that's a great segue into the next slide. So we're talking about resources and handouts, right? So a recording of this webinar will be placed on the external facing Peace Health website. Um, but I want to bring your attention to my website, summitmindfulness.com. On that website, under the resources section, I have created a number of these guided practices. So you are free to browse that website, go to the resources section and either stream those meditation tracks or download them on your 
devices and use them for your practice at home. So thank you for that question, That's Brian. Wonderful. Yes, thanks, Brian. Um, and while we've been uh, talking, we do have just a couple more minutes until the webinar ends. So I am going to squeeze in a couple more questions that came in. Um, Al, this one is from Judith. Do you breathe in, stomach out, and breath out, stomach in? So I think this one is most about the mechanics of breath, if you could speak a little bit to that for Judith. Right, so when you are in a state of relaxation, right, the default mechanism is such that, that when you breathe in, your, your belly will expand, you know, so you are expanding your, uh, your body to take the breath, and when you breathe out, your belly will contract. So that should be um, that should be the mechanism when okay. you breathe in your body expands when you breathe out the body contracts right and i can um speak so, a little bit to that as a massage therapist too i would like to add that when you inhale your diaphragm moves down and it presses your organs down and so you might experience your belly going out at that time and when you exhale your diaphragm moves up under the rib page a little bit and so it makes more space for your organs so it's as if your belly is sinking in so did we answer the question your question jill um that one was from judith oh judith i'm yeah. sorry did we answer your question I think I think so. We'll have to wait and see if she types back to us. Right. You can um, feel free to email your questions and we can answer them in detail later also. And then we have one more from Susan. Uh, Susan uh, says, how long do we practice this before we see the amount of distracting thoughts begin to bother us less? Oh, that's a great question. So every time we practice, we will see different results. So it all depends on what kind of day you're having, what kind of plans you have for the next you know, day or the next hour. So I think to be practical, it is wise to do this practice for 15 minutes because 15 minutes is good time for us to take a break from our day-to-day -day activities and focus on the breath. 15 minutes is a long time for our minds as well. Our minds will not stay still for 15 minutes. So very quickly, you'll find a lot of material to deal with in the sense that when you sit down to meditate, right, uh, when you focus on the breath, within a minute or two, you will start to see distractions pop up and you'll find your mind wander wandering off so on my website the guided meditation tracks i have they are all in that range about 15 minutes each so start with 15 minutes and then if you can do more then then you can do this multiple times but i think 15 minutes is a good start wonderful Thank you so much, Al. I greatly appreciate this. Um, as a reminder, the handout is available in GoToWebinar if you would like to download it. Um, Al mentioned his website, summitmindfulness.com, for these additional resources. And we also have our Healthy You, where this recording will be available, and our presentation slides will be available on our website as well. Uh, so thank you again, everyone, for joining and your participation today, and we wish you the best of health, and I'll see you next time at our next webinar. Take care, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Summer, for all your help. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. My pleasure.